Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a hot take on Antifa and their mafia tactics. Why Antifa is turning into the mafia or a version of the mafia. Organized crime, if you will. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Please check out my books, Wokistan a Novel. Uh, and also the Pineys books one, two, three, and four available ebook, trade paperback, Kindle Unlimited is free. It's all at amazon.com links in the description, support the channel. Okay. So this is from a week or so ago, mafia tactics, black lives matter threatens Cuban business owners with list of demands, sparking counter protest. They were demanding, um, 23% of their employees be black because that matches the representation in the city. Uh, this is in Louisville, Kentucky, and donations of 1.5 of the percent of the revenue of two directly to Black Lives Matter on a month, monthly basis. Yeah, f u b l m. These guys are uh, these Cuban guys weren't having it. Uh, the local community supported them, and good for you guys. Good for you guys standing up against these thugs. But this is very much a mafia tactic. You go in, you say, hey. Be a shame if uh, you're a nice business here, something were to happen. And that's kind of what they did. Um, I think somebody broke a potted plant and said, uh, you know, you could expect more of that or something like that. I I, I don't remember. But, um, you know, this is a shakedown. That's what it is. So BLM's in big trouble if they supported this in any way on a national organization because the FBI will be all over this. Uh, that'll be crossing state lines, and they could use RICO uh, to get you if you coordinated any of this. And uh, there's a good chance, I think, some of these guys uh, don't even know about it, but it just it just brings the FBI even closer to investigating you. And I'll tell you right now, the FBI has CIs and agents already in Antifa and BLM. They're already there. They have to be. First off, it's easy as hell to infiltrate both these groups. I'll tell you exactly how to do it. I would pick an agent who is female, a person of color. Uh, maybe she's gay. And uh, uh, if she can fake a disability or has one, like she's missing a part of a hand or something. I don't, I don't know if disabled uh, agents can actually work in the field, but... Um, you know, if, if she if she faked it some way, like she faked crutches or something like that. Um, but even if she didn't do that, I mean, that would be enough to just put her right in the hierarchy. Because BLM and Black um, Antifa, they're all about black voices, right? So you see a black woman of color joins your group and she wants to move up. Who's going to stop her? Now, other black women of color might get suspicious and stop her, but depends on the group, you know. It's a lot of white people in the Antifa BLM, so they're they're going to move up quick, and it won't take long before they they have privy uh, privileged information. On top of the fact that the FBI has probably cracked um, their communications network, or they 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 invented it, which happens all the time. These guys don't understand. Um, I'm sure there's back doors into all these programs. You can't hide from these guys. Not when you're doing this crap. Not when they want to get you. When they want to get you, they'll get you. So, the fact that these guys tried to shake down local business owners, dumb move. Dumb move on multiple levels. First off, the locals aren't having it. Second off, it just opened you up to all these charges. Um, you know, and in places like The Chop in Seattle... Seattle business owner said CHOP protesters threatened to kill him for detaining thief and arsonist. I mean, a Seattle business owner whose auto shop was broken into by CHOP protester that stole money and started a fire in the building says he repeatedly called 911, but the police never arrived, even though the business is located outside the autonomous zone. Oh, uh, this must have been... Uh, John McDermott, the owner of Car Tender, said he and his son were left to defend the businesses as protesters knocked things down. Oh, this is from June. Okay, so this is back during the CHOP era. 
And uh, here's a video on Twitter. A huge mob just attacked small tender business, demanding the recent man who went into the business. Oh, I remember this. Okay. Yeah, you started a fire. Um, yeah, and look, it's like Tim Pool said covering this. Some businesses will be spared because they have the right uh, sticker in their window or sign in their window that says they're supporters of Antifa. Come here, Joe. Just sit over here and shut up. Uh, and others won't be spared, you know? So you either get shook down, and this is what the mafia guys used to do, and, and some organized crime. If you were a protected business and you were paying the street tax, they put a little symbol in your window, and that was a signal that this is protected by the local, you know, mob or organized crime figure, whoever it was. And if you mess with that, that's their territory. But, you know, the protection is very sort of transitory, right? So if, uh, if a rival gang comes over and smashes out your store because you have this sticker, uh, it's not like the, 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 the mob guys pay for your store. They go back and get payback for you. And that's about all they're going to do. Because they're all about money. They're not really protecting you. They provide the illusion of protection and shake you down for the privilege. Um, now, is there an actual is there actual protection in that? Yeah, somewhat. But a lot of times, you know, these mob guys would actually do the the robbery first in order to scare you into believing that you were vulnerable so you would join up with them and start paying them and they they accumulate that passive income so that i think is what antifa is attempting to do but as usual they have no idea what they're doing uh, another thing they tried to do a christian college in oregon stood up to antifa because they were threatening to destroy a giant cross claiming it was a racist symbol on the Christian campus. Um, so they actually hired armed guards to protect it. So good for you, standing up to the thugs. But, you know, Antifa is just going to get worse and worse, and so is BLM. These guys are going to go to prison. They're, they're going to uh, be hardened, or they're going to uh, say, man, I screwed up my life. i got to really turn things around. Uh, and by the time they get out, you know, they either will go back and try to put their lives together or they will just fall into criminality for the rest of their lives. And that criminality will take the form of, you know, robbing people in order to support their ridiculous aims. This is exactly what, um, you know, the racist gangs did in uh, the 90s, and 2000s, and even going back to the 80s. They, they had this ideology, which, of course, didn't pan out. It's delusional. And then they eventually ended up in criminal gangs to support their wacky ideologies. And, and I mean, it's basically all they knew. And the more criminality that they did, the more criminal they became. The less and less the ideology was important because then it all, it all becomes about money at some point. And that's what's going to happen to Antifa, and this is part of the transformation, I believe. And I think people are finally getting on board with it. Now, they're not a national organization, Antifa. BLM is, so they're likely to get targeted first. But, you know, BLM's kind of like the mafia. Antifa is more like La Stitta, which means the star. It's a, an Italian organized crime outfit. Well, actually, I think it's more Albanian, but northern Italy. And these guys operate in cells rather than... A hierarchy they're all equal members and uh, they actually hate the mafia a lot of them are either ex mafioso or guys who didn't qualify or couldn't get in for whatever reason and uh, they they actually fight with the mafia so you're gonna see that too you're gonna see Antifa fight with BLM because they're gonna start turning it turning on each other at some point the members are gonna turn each other in and it's not just gonna be the agents that have infiltrated they will be CIs people who you know, they got arrested, they were taken in, they said, we're going to put you in prison for 10 years, or you can wear a wire and help us capture your friends. And that's what they're doing. A bunch of, a bunch, so that makes it somewhat easier. Because then your agent's not taking a risk, and the CI actually knows everybody, right? 
they're already in. You don't have to train them. They don't have to go through this long process. They're in to begin with. You know, the only problem is if they get caught. But they're already turning on you. What I predict is right around election time, depends on whether or not the Democrats are ready to throw them under the bus. If the riots are so bad that it's still hurting the Democrats, it'll be before the election. They'll just tell their media mavens, either stop covering this or turn on them. All the money will dry up and they'll get more and more desperate. And they'll, you know, Trump will come in and start sweeping them up with the FBI. And then, you know, instead of, oh my God, secret police are rounding people up and it's a Gestapo and blah, blah, blah. It'll be like, oh, wow, good. They caught that violent Antifa cell and they're all going to prison and no one will be around to help you. So I, I say again, BLM and Antifa members, get out now. BLM too, get out. Look, if you're, if you actually ha give a damn about, you know, police reform and, uh, uh, helping black people get out of those two organizations because there's going to be a lot of people going to jail and just the taint of those two groups is going to be enough to taint any other group you you attempt to align with them because people are turning against it big time criminality is not the way to go eh? people people don't listen some sometimes they got to learn the hard way